Hi, I'm Dr. Case. Uh, welcome to the course. The purpose of this lecture is to explain my rationale for choosing the books that I did. My approach is a bit unorthodox, and I don't want you to be thrown off by it, so I'm offering you this rationale. Many of my colleagues here at UHD and at college campuses across the United States teach the U.S. History Survey with a giant college history textbook. I've taught this course many times with such a textbook. A textbook has many virtues, I will certainly admit. It has enormous breadth in terms of the events, uh, people, developments that it deals with. It has photographs and maps. It's also easy to use in that it's self-contained and consistent. You have one author or set of authors across a semester. From my point of view, however, I have come to not like reliance on a textbook because whatever their virtues are, they are a mile wide and an inch deep. They impart a little about a lot of things instead of offering an in-depth account of anything. Most of all, they give you no sense of process. In other words, how does a historian reconstruct the past? A textbook typically lays out the narrative and doesn't really give you a sense of how historians have come to the conclusions that they have come to. What, what have they done to come to those conclusions? The John Henry book, Steel Driving Man, is an award-winning book that tells the story of John Henry the real John Henry, and if you don't know who John Henry is, you'll read the first chapter and you'll, you'll find out. Uh, this is about the world that John Henry lived and died in, which is the 19th century American South in the era of emancipation and reconstruction. It's also the story about the historian, not biographically speaking so much as it's about how Scott Reynolds Nelson found the real John Henry, or seems to have found him. We will see what you think. When for generations people have thought that John Henry was mere legend. So we will then turn to Stephen Mintz's book, Huck's Raft, A History of American Childhood. We use four chapters from this book. The Mintz book provides us with a history of the United States through the eyes of children or teenagers. We will examine four crucially important periods of U.S. history with this book. The Progressive Era, the Age of Immigration, the uh, Great Depression, New Deal era, and also World War II, the uh, home front during World War II with this book. Uh, just because we're only reading four chapters, don't deem the book unimportant. It, it's very important, and in fact, your second paper is based on uh, Huck's Raft. Neither the John Henry book nor the Mintz book is a textbook. Uh, they drill down, so to speak, into a topic, so you get a sense of broader patterns and developments in U.S. history. Even though it seems rather narrow, childhood, John Henry, uh, these are actually kind of uh, windows into the American past, uh, windows into how themes and events transform the lives of ordinary people, and sometimes how ordinary people changed history. The last book is American Dreams. It's a little bit more textbookish, although it doesn't have maps and photo, well, it has photographs, but it doesn't have huge numbers of these things. It's a survey of U.S. history since 1945. The author is H.W. Brands. He offers us an engaging narrative, lots of great stories, telling quotations. Uh, this book emphasizes U.S. politics, presidents, and foreign policy in contrast to the other two books. We will use this as the main text to understand the Cold War through the Reagan years, uh, the 1980s, really through the end of the Cold War. I think, I hope, that this explanation of the textbooks, the syllabus, and the course intro that I posted uh, should offer you a pretty good sense of, of how we're going to proceed and that you should be able to dive in to the course from here. I'll sign off for now. Uh, have a great first week of classes. Thanks.